Hello fellow Phobies Enjoyers. Today, I'm going to be starting a new uh, series on my channel where I'm going to talk about maps in particular and I'm going to talk about like, I guess, a meta on these maps. So I'm going to give tips and tricks, if you will. I'm going to talk about openings. I'm going to talk about the maps and what make, makes them special. And I'm going to talk about uh, like strategies. So this first video is going to be about Big House. Big House is probably the map that I, I think I first started playing the game in. Um, I think it's like a pretty regular map, nothing too crazy in it. So, you know, I think it's a good one to start the, the series on. Um, so in this video, I'm going to probably take a bit more time explaining some more things like more, I guess, more precisely in more detail. And then in the next videos I'm going to do in this series, I'm probably going to put them in a playlist and you, you can watch any one you want. And it's probably going to be way shorter, right? I'm going to try to make it like 10 minutes long. This might be a little longer because I need to talk and explain some things. So let's get finally right into the video. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about Big House and the things that uh, make it special. So let's get into it. All right, so here we have the beautiful, the big house. The first thing you'll notice here, and I think, I guess maybe one of the most important things, is to know where the panic points are, okay? So here are the panic points. I'm sure you can find them. So as you would expect, when panic points are on one side of the map, they're gonna be easier for the player on that side of the map to capture, generally, right? So there's this thing I would call the panic point priority or something that um, is defined pretty much by how easy it is for a panic point to be captured by, let's say, the blue player. So you see I numbered all the panic points from one to five. Um, as the number gets higher, it's harder for the blue player to consistently uh, capture this panic point. Okay, so you'll see number one here is very close to the to the blue keyhole, and it's even so close as that it, it allows the blue player to capture um, the panic point in one turn with a phobi that has two moves. So the next one is going to be the the second one here. It takes longer to get, but it's also very very far from the orange keyhole, so it makes it very hard to capture it. I mean, this one is all, also very much blue most of the time, but it happens that sometimes like orange player will get something here that defends this, and it pretty much sometimes becomes orange for quite a while. So that's something to note. Then we have the number three here, the neutral panic point. So that's the panic point that's usually very, very defended on both sides, which means that um, both players have a lot of damage or potential damage that can be inflicted on that panic point. So let's say uh, if you're a blue player and you have a very um, valuable phobie, let's say like a Gins thing that walks on here, it's usually very dangerous compared to a panic point here or panic point here because there's going to be a lot of damage that's going to be able to be dealt on that Gins thing and if it dies, um, you're in a lot of trouble. Okay, so that makes sense. Then we have number four, number five, so it works the same way, it's just from the other side of the board. So it's very hard for the blue player to capture these panic points. Probably a little bit easier to capture the, the, the panic point number four, so that's something to note. Okay, now we've talked about, talked about the panic points. Let's talk about the obstacles, all right? So what is around the panic points, right? We have some obstacles here, here, here. You can find them too, I'm sure. So what uh, obstacles do? they make lobbers stronger, right? If there's more obstacles, um, the lobbers are going to be better. In the same way, the flyers or the flying phobies are also going to be a lot better. So let's talk in specifics. When would you use a lobbing phobie in this map? Well, it would be to shoot around probably these obstacles here, okay? Of course, the flying and lobbing ability is very general, so it can be very opportunistic. Let's say if the opponent has a grave digger, and they end up placing a block here, you might want to use, uh, let's say, a Hevo to post him here and actually be able to shoot here, right? Or even be here and be able to shoot there and there. There's always, in every single map, there's going to be opportunities for lobbers to be good because you can place obstacles uh, on the map. Also, when I talk about lobbing phobies, um, I think I'm just going to completely exclude Jar Cannon because Jar Cannon is... is it's a completely different case. The three range makes it uh, completely different, right? I think in this series, I'm gonna associate to the the ability of lobbers to be effective, a score, right? So I'm gonna call it the lobber score. And this map, this is very subjective. This is just like the feeling I'm getting, but I would be, from this map, I think the lobbers are just uh, a little bit better than average 
in terms of like I mean if you average out the ability of Lubbers to be good in every single map this run is probably just a little bit above average I would say so uh, it gets uh, probably like a 6 out of 10 I think I just want to add on one more thing in this map and you're gonna notice it as well there's no healing spots right in a lot of maps there's healing spots a little bit like behind here or um, sometimes the healing spots are, are more active right they're more closer to the center of the map um, but in this one there's literally no healing spots so what this means is the undead phobies are going to be a little better and the same thing goes with poison poison is also going to be a little bit better um, the reason why is because if there's pro well first of all if there's no healing spots the poison phobies are going to be able to poison uh, other phobies and that is going to be harder to heal now second point the undead now the uh, i mean it's only relative to other phobies right the undead are not like if there's no healing spells they don't get a magical ability uh, on top of what they have but when there is healing spells the damage null the monster and the uh, mechanical phobies can get healed on that healing spell so if they get into combat they take a bunch of damage let's say stabby is, is down to 200 uh, hp then you can just run that stabby back to, 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 to that healing spell and you can do that with like let's say for example a baby sneaky right so baby sneakies are going to be a little worse on maps that have um healing spells so when there's no healing spells they're a little better okay with all that said i mean i think you get at least i don't know if this is useful i mean you can you guys can tell me in the comments if that like little analysis is just useless like obvious nonsense um but i think it can just help a little bit situate yourself with which phobies can be good in this map Now we're gonna talk about openings. I'm just gonna want to go into this game uh, game here and show you some of the openings I like, some of the op openings um, that I've seen players use. So let's first talk about some player one openings. So this means the first player coming into the board, you have three keys, what can you do to get an advantage early on, okay? So, I mean, you probably, if you've played phobies, you've probably used a bunch of uh, one cost in the beginning of the game uh, the thing that one cost phobies do is they allow you a lot of control on the map in terms of panic points without too many keys invested right so if you were to use uh, three cost phobies only right so let's say we go for like a jar cannon right so the thing about jar cannon opening first of all it's very vulnerable right so probably player two can just go with a murder wing here and then you have to like run away over there if you don't want to die it's already not a great control over the map but the thing about Jarkanen is he was only one guy right so if you go with two guys instead so maybe two one cost phobies right so your second turn as player one uh, you're gonna have three panic points what i like to do with as player one on this map i just pop out a cassori so ca what cassori allows you to do is a great control over some ta some of these squares here but the, the reason why the, the I, I like the cassowary is you're usually just able to get him, get him here second turn, probably get a cat here and have three panic points. And uh, having this cassowary on board early is really good to have control because your opponent can't really advance too much because this cassowary is just able to go everywhere. He's super versatile, right? He can just hit anyone with 500 damage that's in a range of uh, four, right? So if Kasori is here, he can just one, two, move here, and then leap here and hit someone here. Okay, so that's what I like. Now, another thing that I like is just going with Able Mangoes. I don't have Stabby, so I don't go with Stabby, but if you have Stabby, I would recommend going for Stabby over Bow Mangoes. Take a shot for every time I said Stabby there. But uh, yeah, I just like the Stabby or the Bow Mangoes early because what it allows you to do is second turn you probably pop him here or even here you can also put him up here and usually it's very it's very hard for your opponent to uh, get control over this top part of the board right the the bottom part is usually the most con contested part but if you come up here here and then eventually maybe here you're able to suddenly hit a lot of phobies pretty much everywhere and very safely get control over these parts of the board and maybe even here. Now, the Bowman goes or the Stabby opener is very long term, right? You don't really want to pa uh, capture panic points early on. 
So this means your heart is probably going to take a bit of damage, but you're hoping to take control over the board long term, right? For the mid game, um, Bowman Gold is a great way to do that, but he's slow. I guess another like risky opener is going with a Venus. Now that's probably bad, <laughs> but I kind of I've, I've done it before. It's it's a bit of a meme thing, right? So if you want to try it, you could do that. Um, and usually what uh, I haven't really mentioned it because as, I mean, I just think take, take it for granted But when I say uh, Use one cost phobies I usually just mean two move phobies that are generally good in openings, right? So we're talking about the cassowary. We're talking about Kabel and uh, Contour Shio and that's probably it, right? So early on you want to take base stats phobies I think that are very versatile. You don't want to go I think with boom because the best it can do is probably just trade with another one cost, right? So that probably does nothing. Uh, early on, you probably don't want to go with Sakasin because the only thing you're going to be able to poison is a one cost phobia or two cost phobia, and then you, it just dies. Um, it's not that bad. I mean, if that's all you have, you can try it, um, and you're probably just going to be able to capture panic points uh, just fine. But uh, it's going to be very easy for your opponents to kill these phobies. If you go with a muffin top, I. I you can try it. I've seen people open with a muffin top. The thing is, um, you lose a lot of damage on the board, right? So if your opponent just goes with like a murder wing or something, uh, you, you might regret not going for a phobie that can actually deal damage. Because combine a 372 damage on a, on a razor mouth with another attack from a cassowary or something, and you might be able to kill a, a murder wing, right? So it, it really forces your opponent to be more conservative if you, you, you actually opt for phobies that deal damage early on. Also, Ted and Jill, these are phobies that are a bit slow, so I, I wouldn't really recommend them in an opening where you need to capture panic points fast in order to deal damage to your opponent hard uh, fast, right? Let me take another example of probably the best opening on this map. I've said it, it's the Snowball. Snowball is one of the pho uh, these phobies that it's great for to to attack, right? To to have a burst attack on an opponent in, opponent in the mid game. It's also good in the early game to capture panic points fast. Usually, to capture this middle panic point, you need to sacrifice a one cost phobie. But if you do it really early on with a snowball, the worst thing that will happen: jar cannon hit. I mean, if you're like me, your snowball is probably not gonna trade trade against a jar cannon, so you're gonna have to like move back and then your snowball is gonna have taken a bit of damage but then the heart's looking really bad for your opponent already right if your opponent has snowball you might also take more damage but then you can just hit the snowball back and move back and then you're still fine so you can move it back and you haven't sacrificed any keys to capture the middle panic point and then it's still your opponent's turn to capture this middle panic point and they're probably gonna have to use a one cost phobie to come in here and then your snowball and probably another phobie is gonna be able to hit it Recapture the bank point. Yeah, that's why I think the snowball is the best opening. Is that all I've said? I mean, I guess you can also go for three one cost phobies. Haven't really mentioned it, but if you want to try it, man, like if you want to do something, I guess like this, it can allow you to do even more bunker damage or even more hard damage to your opponent very early on. So we're talking about capturing, the, let's say, three panic points or maybe even four panic points really early. Uh, right, so we're talking about capturing this, capturing this, and again, capturing this on turn two. But the problem is, your opponent is probably gonna have like, um, let's say they have like a cassowary here, and like a cat here, and like another one cost phobie or something. Like, they might be able to kill two or two one cost phobies and then cap another point, something like that. And then you've lost a lot of a lot of keys for very temporary hard damage. And I don't usually do that just because, um, when you lose lots of keys early, you might find it harder to get control over the map. So this might mean that your opponent is going to be able to cap this point here and really push into your phobies early on. And that's going to be very f hard for you to defend because you've, lo you've lost two keys. Two, two keys might st seem stupid, but uh, it matters, man. A cassowary or something matters so much in, in these, uh, in these, in these mid-game scenari scenarios. So, we're gonna go with the turn two, uh, turn two, player two openings. So this is, I mean, if you come into the game as player two, what do you use? Uh, this is what I'm gonna show you. Now, first thing we're gonna see from our opponent here, this is like my brother's account and he doesn't even use it. So that's why the phobies are like level one. Um, this is just gonna be an example. Uh, 
but it does, doesn't really mean that it's gonna be this thing, right? So let's say it's like a cat and a, uh, and a cassowary. It can also be like, you can imagine it's a snowball in the middle, it doesn't really matter. One of the, the openings I really like to use as player two is the bowman goes or the stabby, right? Your player one, if they go with something like this, they might think they can like come here and I guess this can come here and cap the point. I mean, you can run these scenarios in your head if you want. I think they, they're running completely fine against this thing here, the bowm angles and the razor mouth opening. The reason why is because the bowm angle is pretty good because it covers these 20 points with with something like 500 damage. So if your opponent if your opponent tries to cap any of them with probably one cost phobies, you can come here with a bowm angles, hit this, and then go with your jar cannon step on the place where bow angles used to be and then hit it once it's probably going to be dead um and if it's not dead it's taken about a bunch of damage and that's good for you so let's say this canine goes here it's not going to die but it's going to be down to i mean let's say it's level nine it's probably going to be down to something like uh, 500 600 hp so already that's pretty good for you um now you do lose a lot of hard damage i think that's something you have to deal with as per your two but you gotta make use of that one other key that you get. Uh, you gotta use it wisely. What else can you do as player one? Uh, I guess snowball early as player two is just bad. I don't think you want to do it. Arguably, you can do it if player one goes snowball here. You can go snowball here, and uh, one cost here. So that's probably gonna be the best way for you to um, <clears throat> to conserve your heart as much as possible early on right so take as little hard damage as possible um but that usually doesn't really matter that much i think as period two I, I usually just go with the intention of conserving my keys conserving my units and just slowly getting slowly getting back the control of the map and sort of i guess accepting the fact that my my heart's gonna take a bunch of damage now this is gonna be very general here but you can go with a two cost right so you can go with the kasori let's say here Right, so against this it's completely safe if they gun snowball i guess it's probably not the best idea to come here you might just want to go here right slowly getting your control back of the map i think as p2 in any case you want to come here and capture a panic point okay so that i guess that's the only thing I, I can i can really say that always i would do this always go for a one cost or two cost or even a three cost and capture this point now do that and be careful that thing that you put here doesn't die i mean i guess unless it's a one cost if it's a one cost it probably doesn't matter because it takes a lot of energy for your opponent to come here and kill this and you're probably gonna go with a, a, a murder wing next turn combined with some other stuff you spawned in and be able to kill whatever killed your cat so i guess that covers um, what I meant to, to talk about here uh, in the openings, hopefully I g I've given you some ideas of what you should do, of what you should not do, I and hopefully I also made you like think about it a little bit because that's you, that's usually not something we take the time to sit down and think about, right? The early game openings, but having something prepared, there's nothing wrong with that, and it can help out a lot uh, in the early in the later game. Like having a screwed up opening in the early game is can be very very bad okay i'm saying this from experience all right so now we're going on the part three of this video okay we're going to be talking about the strategies what what are you looking to do on this map when you're going into the the, the mid game right after the openings after you've captured a bunch of panic points how are you going to convert a very undeveloped position into something that uh, will get you a win that's hopefully what i'm going to be able to help you with right now now I'm not completely sure how I should like actually like make a video and talk about strategies because usually strategies involve very specific uh, board positions, right? So should I go and take a look at other players' games, um, or should I just go into like a, a theoretical game or uh, playing against myself and showing some things? Now I think I'm just gonna go and take a look at people's games. So let's take Alien Engineer for for a second. Um, and take the first map, uh, the first game on Big House that he played against Armor Ken, okay? So we're gonna take a look at this and just note a few things. I mean, first, right off the bat, I haven't seen this game, this is very random, 
but I'm gonna be guessing there's gonna be at least like a stabby or bow mangles on each side. Uh, first of all, you see a stabby, okay? So we talked about stabby in the opening. What the hell, there's a Karen. Okay, well, this might be a pretty uh, weird game. Clinical, what is any engineer doing? I can't figure it out. It, uh, they must be doing missions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They must be doing missions. This is probably not a <laughs> Okay. Never mind, never mind. Let's, other, uh, let's move on to another game, okay? So le let's see this one. Let's see what happens. I think I saw a stabby MVP. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. What comes out? All right, so we, oh, what, that's very strange. It's the first time I've seen the Grave Digger opening on this map. Um, I'd have to like consider it a little more to see if it's good or not. But the thing is, I guess the point is you want to free up a bit of space on each side of the board. So that's one strategy I guess you can go for. Let's see how this develops. I guess uh, I'll be able to form my opinion on it later. So we see both sides take two panic points. And you see a stabby here comes out. And already, okay, we see a, a, um, a good move, I think, from Uncle's Solid. I don't want to make this like a game review thing. I want to talk about the map in particular, but I can't help it. Um, so one strategy I guess you can use here, and, and this pretty much gives a good example, is using blocks here to block off parts of the map to allow lobbying phobies to be much better, right? So if you have a, a block here, the stabby can't go here and attack the unbearable. So the unbearable will be able to come here and uh, attack the stabby on the other side, right? Pre that makes sense. So the way you can do that, first of all, you can go with a grave digger and another lobbying phoby, or you can go, I guess, with a crush more as well. I've seen some crush mores on this map and it, it is pretty effective. Um, okay, so that's also, uh, I guess, another counter. I mean, if you, if you see someone placing blocks, you can just go with your own grave digger and break blocks and pretty much make it uh, hard for your opponent to actually get advantage in terms of placing obstacles because you're going to be destroying them, right? So here in, in engineer, there's another obstacle, but it doesn't really matter. And are we going to see, is this, is this dead? Okay, so that's dead. That was probably a bit of a misplay, to be honest. Now, one more thing I guess I should say here, and I, it, sh it should have been the first thing I, I actually talk about for the strategies on this map. Some maps are very, very cha chaotic. And I guess there's many ways to define chaotic, but um, I, I'm mostly talking about the panic points, I guess, in some ways. So it's very easy for both players usually to capture any panic point on the map. And I'm mostly, uh, when, I, when I say this, I'm mostly talk, uh, thinking about like Red Rum. Red Rum is a very chaotic map, in my opinion. Uh, it's mostly based on control. Uh, here, it's not very hard to control your part of the map, right? The left side. And it usually goes down to that there's two panic points on the left, two panic points on the right, each one color. And the one, on the, on, the one in the center is uh, being exchanged from each side. If you want to have a good strategy on this map, usually you, want, you can just go with stabby or grave, uh, or yeah, you see both stabby on two sides. Um, you can go with bomb angles, unbearable is not even that bad. I'm sure he's a lobbing phobi, so he might, I mean, have little worse stats if he doesn't get to use the ability of being a lobber, but still, I mean, he's got two range, good damage. So he's also just like a pretty good tower uh, turret in my opinion, right? So I'm one move, a two range phobie. So if you set yourself up with a bunch of one move, two range phobies, and um, you, I mean, you also need to have like a good control over the center panic point. So you want to use a lots of lots of one cost phobie. If you use a more expensive phobie, you need to make sure they don't die if they get to the panic point, right? So, I mean, let's say for example, you might want to use like Flopsy. Flopsy can get to the middle panic point, and if no one's gonna step on it, well, congrats, you just captured the panic point for pretty much free. Now you get to reuse that Flopsy again to recapture that panic point. If they're set up, to, I mean, if you go to the higher elo, I don't think that's gonna work. They're gonna come into the middle with another one cost and step on your Flopsy. So you, I think you just wanna go with one cost phobies to recapture the middle panic point. Exceptions of side, there's always gonna be some moments where maybe going with a grave digger or something in the center that's usually happens like uh lots of times where you just start with the grave digger use the ability and now he sort of gets to be useless so there might come a time where you want to throw him away especially if, if he's taken a bunch of damage but i mean here yeah you see 869 that's not the full hp grave digger so he's a bit he's a bit like a used a used card he lost a big parts of big part of his his uh, value okay so, okay, we talked about that, okay? So we see both sides going with the strategy of getting one cost in. 
Also, look at this. There's a, a Baba Yaga. So I wanted to talk about traps. I sort of just forgot. But traps, I think, in this map are very good. I hesitated to say they're very good, but I think they are very good. There's a few maps where traps are as good as this one, I think, because um, there's very limited movement in this one, right? There's lots of obstacles, especially on the sides. So if you want to get to a panic point or if you want to get to a side of the board, you really have like two ways in, right? You have the bottom corridor and the top corridor, and then there's the panic points. So you can really place a, a trap pretty much as far into your opponent's territory as possible. And there's a good chance they're going to step on it. Now you want to, you know, you want to apply game theory to it, right? You want to place the traps where they don't expect it, so that they step on it and you win. Um, that's always like the, the strategy about traps. Um, so which phobia you can get? I think the Venus and the Baba Yaga and the Poison Ivy are probably the best. If you go with a Unicorn, Unicorn is like kind of like a defensive uh, a trap placer, right? He's good. He has good stats in general, right? So you, you can just use a Unicorn whenever to have a turret and he's probably like especially good in this map um but placing traps with unicorn is usually not something you want to um like the traps the the opponents usually not gonna step on it very frequently that right so the one range makes these traps less effective but they're very defensive so if your opponent really goes to push in your face having lots of unicorn traps uh, very close to you might be pretty good you see there's a good uh, a good exchange of keys here alien engineer goes with a a sheep and i think that the, the the thing he wants to do here is break the block eventually to have the sheep pop here but there's going to be healing for bees eventually too so i don't know um maybe it's another strategy so we we you see what i mean like this map is very very slow and this is also a thing i should mention all right battery died uh, battery died on my camera guys uh this is just something you have to deal with if you're coming to my channel let's keep it going okay? okay i think the traps are especially good in this map because uh, the, the games are usually very slow there's usually lots of time to place traps here so you see how this game has been uh, this you know exchange of panic points has been going for maybe like 15 turns at this point well it keeps going for another 12 uh, 20 25 turns okay so there's lots of time to place lots of traps and usually in these slow positions the traps allow you to gain uh, to you know get the, the control of the map very slowly but without having to put any of your phobies at risk right so you see here placing two traps and there, i'm sure there's going to be there's going to be lots of traps eventually and you see nothing happens here literally nothing i don't know what's happening why there wasn't a banning point getting captured earlier but whatever it is what it is there's another capture now the panic points on uh, orange again and nothing happens <laughs> nothing happens then there's a capture recapture and you see what i mean and now there's finally a push okay so eventually on this map you're gonna see an opportunity to push and if you have to take it you have to take it so I'm guessing at this point, maybe blue player did not have any one costs left, or maybe they thought they could get away with killing uh, a stabby here or a sheep. Sheep cannot die. I don't believe it. So that's a bit of a weird push. I don't know if it actually works, but yeah, two phobies die on the blue side of the board. Then the grave digger dies and there's a bit of a retreat. Um, but I think the engineer just has, just has more keys, right? And then the, the the unbearable dies and just, I think slowly we're gonna see, yeah, orange just recapture panic points and just push the heart. And is that gonna be an orange win or I don't even know anymore. Yeah, orange wins. Okay, so I mean, you saw that this game, this is a very high ELO game, by the way. So we're talking about 3,600. This is all sum of all fears. And I think in this, mini series i'm just gonna show some of our fears game because even if some viewers may watch this at lower elo and the op opponents are gonna make more mistakes um if you play with a mindset or a strategy of high elo there's just more things to benefit from it you know, one more thing i can do i guess is just show all the phobies here on the album and talk about each one individually on this map this would be if i was going crazy on it and I guess I can just like go over it very, very quickly. But see, one cost are usually like very similar in this map. There's no too much to talk about. Um, I think the droney, 
I guess you can no you don't want to use Joni on this map because even in the opening uh, snowball you just one shots it so that's very bad if you tr if you want to use Joni you can try it the opening but you need to know for certain that your opponent does not have snowball when I talk about snowball it's this one I'm sure you know um, now what else is there to talk about I don't even know to be honest Jar Cannon, I didn't really talk about Jar Cannon placement on this map, like the specific of it. I think Jar Cannon in this map is like pretty good because there's usually lots of um, lots of uh, stalemates, right? It's a very slow game. So having a Jar Cannon that's well placed that can do long range damage um, can really force your opponent to do a play that they don't want to do. Um, what else is there? There's this unique card here, the Honey Bear, that I've been really loving so much. I've been playing it so much, like abusing it, you don't even want to know. So if you look here, you have a, let's imagine you have a honey bear here, right? Let's draw it, this is the honey bear. This is how it looks. It looks like a, it looks like a, a certain human organ with a face, but let's not talk about it. If you use the honey bear right here, the mod here, the disabled parts of the maps is going to be, um, it's going to be all of this, right? So panic point here, panic point here, they're not going to do anything. And the same thing can apply here, okay? So if you want to disable this part, you can disable all of these tiles. So you can pretty much disable two orange panic points usually without sacrificing any units. And this means that there's two blue panic points, one orange panic point on either side. And long term, you're going to do more damage to the heart than you're going to take damage to the heart. So having a honey bear on board if you're going into these really long games that stretch out for a long time because no player wants to actually push and do damage because they're going to lose more phobies than they're going to take, um, having a honey bear can really allow you to get more damage on the heart from a very, very safe position. And let's go, go back to honey bear for a second. Look at these stats, okay? Not great damage. It's still a, it's still a turret, right? So one move, two range. So it's nice to have some range here. It can only do 700 damage in one turn at maximum, and this is a level seven, so uh, you need to have it at a pretty high level. Uh, although you might not need to have it at a pretty high level because the ability works the same, but it is tanky. Look at this HP, so it's very, very hard to kill. Um, if you're put, It's usually the last thing that dies in a team, so that's that. I really like the honey bear, to be honest. And in this map, I think it's pretty good. Now, the three range phobies are, I think, kind of broken right now, but um, this might change. I mean, there might be buffs and nerves by the time you're seeing this, uh, but having either either of these three range co uh, three range phobies um, in the map, I mean, I, it, it has to be kind of insane, right? But I don't have personal experience, so I can't really tell um, for sure. Now, what else is there? I, I talked about traps. I don't know if Jeeves is kind of, is so good. Um, because the simple G counter to Jeeves is a Venus, because the traps disable themselves, right? So if you place a trap on the Jeeves traps, both are going to cancel out and nothing's going to happen. So it seems like a waste of six keys if the opponent has Venus, but if they don't know how to use it properly, I think Jeeves can be OP as usual, right? Um, I didn't talk about Brony. Brony is also one of these special cards, but I think Brony is just much better in large maps, especially maps with no obstacles. So I wouldn't use brony if you have her or it i don't even know but if you have brony i wouldn't really use it on uh, uh, the big house um of course beauty is going to be broken not sure about heartbreaker and i didn't really talk about it uh, yet but having push or pull phobies i mean pull are completely different but having push phobies that you know are able to push phobies usually into the void uh, are not as good where where uh, when there's no void right having a push phobie without having a cliff usually just means that you push a phobie and that nothing else happens so that sucks um same thing is hardbreaker although hardbreaker is also like a, pu a pull ability so it's a little better right i didn't talk about it also but the pull abilities on this map right miss moffat might be kind of busted uh, but you need to make sure that it is actually like a very solid position you have and you need to make sure that even if you if you spend five keys on miss moffat uh, you're not going to lose strength in your position because uh, having a Moffat uh, usually means that you um, have to invest five keys in something that's not going to be a very good defender. It can not do so much damage. 
but you know it can pull phobies into your position into your two range phobies and that's usually pretty strong because the, the the thing you pull just dies right but make sure you don't push your miss muffet too hard because it's gonna die too and <laughs> if that happens you're just gonna lose more keys than you you take um so what else is that to talk about i guess the check is kind of broken as usual evil is probably broken as usual don't know about um some other mother it's probably pretty good um and yeah i mean is that all i wanted to talk about i swear i didn't want it, it to be too long i talked as fast as i could i'm gonna try to make other videos like much more short than uh, this one because i want this to be something that's easy to watch you know you can just watch whenever there's a, a map in rotation you can just watch it uh, whenever you want anyways hope you guys like this video sorry a bit about the camera uh, hopefully that doesn't happen again even though it definitely will and i will see you in the next one all right there's i'm gonna make a bunch of videos soon about all the maps that are in rotation as i'm recording that might change by the time you're seeing this but hopefully not too much hopefully i get these videos out as soon as i can but yeah let's stop talking about